Hello, a student uh, today asked me about producing this uh, frequency distribution and I thought it would make a good opportunity to kind of make a little screencast uh, showing how we did it in class, you know, since everybody had to kind of just watch it and we didn't really have a um, kind of a demonstration for everybody to do, like you didn't have your computers in front of you, so here we go. So we wanted to make a... Uh, a frequency distribution we have a lot of data over here about daily rainfall a lot of zeros and I believe the student was probably having problems with this because we were taking out we were going out from tenths to hundredths and so uh, we need to treat the the class width uh, the, the lim class limits a little bit differently so my first thing I'm gonna go over to here and I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna make a tab delimited copy okay and in this tab over here, I already have a, um, a spreadsheet, a blank spreadsheet all ready to go. So I'm just gonna go over here. I'm going to paste the information into my spreadsheet. Uh, sometimes I'm sure, sometimes it's a little slower than others, but there it is right there. So that's the spreadsheet, that's the actual data. Now over here, I'm going to put in, um, you know, it depends on whether we interpret them as the limits, but I, I, I'm going to write down boundaries then because I remember somebody in class pointed that out. So class boundaries. Okay, and then right next to it, I'm going to type frequencies. Just abbreviate it. And here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my, my um, problem. Okay. And actually the first class boundary I'm going to put in is actually going to be the one between the first and the second because that's just the way that they uh, interpret the numbers. It, it, you're always looking for the upper class boundary on each of the classes. So to start for the first one, we're gonna put the upper class boundary on this guy right here, 0.19. So we wanna go half the distance between 0.19 and 0 0.20. Okay, 0.19, 0 0.20. So that's gonna be 0.195, okay. And then I'm going to hit equals, and to generate all the other ones, I'm going to look at the class width. So the class width, if you remember, is basically uh, going to be the distance between the limits. So right here, it looks like the class width is 0.2. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select this last or uh, this class width, the class boundary that I first put in, and then basically add the class width making a little formula and I put the little equal sign there see the equal sign to tell it that I have a formula so this says take this this cell whatever's in this cell add 0.2 to it and so what I've done is I've made the next class boundary so if you go back over here notice the net that would be the boundary for the next class okay now to generate all the other classes I'm just gonna take this little corner and I'm just gonna drag it down now, normally we just drag it down just enough to fill in all the thing, but I just wanted to point out that you can just keep generating these for days and it, and it actually won't really matter. We aren't gonna even use any of the class boundaries bigger than, it looks like 1.395. But if we see over here, 1.395, that's gonna be the last one we're gonna use. So we could technically delete all these ones at the bottom. But as you'll see, when I fill out the frequencies, they're just gonna have zeros. So, you know, basically we can throw those out. Okay, so over here, I'm going to type in equals, and then since I want a frequency distribution, I'm going to start typing frequency. Now, the beauty of Google Docs, and I really like this, and it's probably better than even Excel, I don't think, well, I don't know if Excel has this kind of help, but basically when you start typing in a command, it uh, it gives you a, uh, a little help key here. So you have a the argument, which is the data and the classes, and it basically tells you what it needs. So it just says that for the data, it means it wants to know what all the numbers are you're dealing with. And for the classes, that's what these class boundaries are gonna define, okay? And you can also view an example and you know view a complete list if that's not exactly the command that you want. So I'm gonna hit enter and it just auto-completes it. So it tells me I first need to tell it about the data and the way I'll do so is by selecting it. And then I'm going to hit comma. Now it wants the, the classes, so I'm going to go like that. Okay, and then I'm going to close it and then hit enter. And I absolutely love the way uh, 
the way Google Docs does this because it doesn't require any kind of um, you know extra you know, keyboard things to deal with array formats. It just basically dumps them out, uh, which I really like. Uh, Excel, I always forget the key combination to fill in for an array um, array formula. So there it goes. There I have 22, I have 4, I have 3, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so 22, 4, 3, 0, 0, and 1. So I'm going to go back over here and enter those numbers in. 22, uh, I already forgot, 4, 3, okay, 4, 3, zero 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 and then finally a one uh, let me double check to make sure I got that right so how many zeros I got one two three I think there was one two three yeah and then finally one on the last class so now I'm back over here and I'm gonna hit uh, check answer and I get it right which you know is probably good because I mean we did we did this work but when you do these things by hand it, it, it's very uh, it's very uh, you know, both mentally time-consuming, little tedious, and very error-prone, to be honest with you. So uh, I highly, su uh, I highly suggest, uh, you know, learning how to have a computer do this particular thing. You know, and then it's your job to interpret the numbers, though. So you actually have the harder job. Um, let the computer do the tedium. You, you, you do the, you do the hard work. All right, all right. That's it. Thank you.